Hello everyone, this is Sir Aris. Today, let us talk about Contour Integrals and Laurent series. First, let us consider Cauchy's theorem. Let C be a simple closed curve with a continuously turning tangent, except at finite number of points, which means that we can have corners uh, aside from that, a finite number of corners, but otherwise the curve must be smooth. If Fz is analytic on and inside C, then Fz is uh, integral around C of Fz dz equals zero. So this is a line integral. Um, we call it contour integral in the theory of complex variables. To prove this, we can simply um, write fz, so the integral of f z dz. We write fz as um, sum of the, the real part and an imaginary part u plus iv and dz. Um, let's write it as dx plus i dy. And simple multiplication, you get u dx plus i v dx plus i u dy minus v dy. Combining terms. Uh, real terms say u dx minus v dy u dx minus v dy plus i v dx plus u dy next step we use Green's theorem from vector analysis um, close integral, uh, contour integral of p dx plus q dy, this is p dx plus q dy is equal to the area integral inside the path c, partial q with respect to x minus partial p with respect to y dx dy so for our two terms here so the close integral u dx minus v dy can be written as um, area integral of partial v but v is, has a negative sign here so we write minus v partial x minus partial u with respect to y dx dy. Also, for this second term, v dx u dy, v dx plus u dy, so the area integral of partial u, so it's u here, respect to x minus partial v with respect to y okay to get the final form of these two expressions we use um, the Cauchy Oops. Riemann equations given by partial u with respect to x equals partial v with respect to y and partial v with respect to x equals negative partial u with respect to y. So we substitute this, let's say for um, partial u or, or this one, partial v with respect to x, this. Um, that's equal to negative partial u with respect to y. So this is zero, okay? Partial uh, integral 
of u dx minus v dy is equal to zero. Now let's look at the second one, v dx plus u dy. Um, partial u respect to x minus partial d respect to y. These two are the same, so this is also zero. So v dx plus u dy equals zero, which means that these two terms are zero, so close integral vc dz or fc dz equals zero. Another theorem, um, we have Cauchy's integral theorem, a formula. If fz is analytic on and inside a simple closed curve c, the value of fz at a point z equals a inside c is given by the following contour integral along c. Um, to prove, let a be a fixed point inside a simple closed curve c, so this is our curve c, a is in inside, and consider the function phi z equals fz over c minus a. fz is analytic on an inside c. However, f phi z, this is not analytic at z equals a. So phi z is not analytic. Um, I'll just write not analytic in inside c because of z equals a okay oh actually i have actually written that so there's no need Oops. phi z is not analytic inside c Let C prime be a small circle inside C. So the C prime here, we center A and radius rho. We will integrate from A around C, so in this direction, and then go to B, and then integrate around C prime before going back to A. So this is our path. So we go here, but before going back to A, We'll go to B first, and then turn around here, and then go to A. So we will integrate from, uh, or from Cauchy's integral, from Cauchy's theorem, the integral along the combined path is zero. So inside, um, phi z is analytic. Um, inside or between c and c prime so if you get the integral um close integral phi z is equal to zero from cauchy's theorem Now, um, this integral is equal to the sum of these two, two paths here. Um, there, there is this crossing line here, but it's just the same. So they will just cancel out. So we simply can add the C path here and the C prime path. And that will just be the same as this integral, which is zero. Or if you change the direction of the C prime as counterclockwise, so this is this one here is counterclockwise. While this one is clockwise. So if both are counterclockwise, this becomes negative. You can put it on the other side. So we have this equation. We can only we can focus on this C prime integral, which is easier. Um, along the circle C prime, Z 
is equal to a plus rho e i theta. So this is z equals a plus rho, and then we go around the circle for different values of theta. So if you take the derivative dz is rho i e i theta d theta. So we have um, close integral of phi z dz around c counterclockwise equals phi z dz around c counterclockwise so c prime equals um, c prime phi z is f z over z minus a dz where z f z z minus a is this okay so this we can write as um, integral from 0 to 2 pi around the circle of fz divided by z minus a is right here z minus a is rho e i theta and then dz is rho i e i theta d theta so there are terms that would cancel so you have zero to two pi of f z i d theta okay to simplify the formula we take the limit as z approaches a so here we are free to do that we take z as small as possible approaching a um, so our uh, integral phi z dz equals f z over z minus a dz that's equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi of f a i d theta which is simply um, f a times i times so 0 to 2 pi that's 2 pi minus 0 or 2 pi or we can write f a simply as in uh, 1 over 2 pi i close integral of f z over z minus a dz and this formula works for a inside c for a outside c then using cautious theorem we have a close integral of f z divided by z minus a dz is equal to zero okay let's proceed to the next uh, section on Lorentz series uh, Lorentz theorem which we will not prove uh, meant, uh, says that if you let c1 and c2 be two circles With center at z sub zero, let f z be an analytic in the region R between the circles. Then f z can be expanded in a series of this form. So take note of this: you have a sub zero plus a one z minus z sub zero plus a two z minus z sub zero squared, and so on. And then you have b one coefficients here, where the exponents of z minus z sub zero is in power of negative uh, integers this convergent uh, in the region r this is called Lorentz series 
B series, so these terms here are uh, is called the principal part of the Lorentz series. The formulas for the coefficients of the Lorentz series are given by these two. Uh, where C is N includes simple closed curves surrounding Z naught and lying in R. For example, consider this series. Find where the series converges. We can use for this part here. Uh, the ratio test tells us that it converges between uh, so uh, when the absolute value is less than 1 here or when z absolute value is less than 2 or when z is between minus 2 and 2 for the series of negative powers the absolute value or by the way absolute value of z is uh, is the um, the magnitude of the complex number Okay, so for the series of negative powers, the absolute value of these terms here tends to zero if 1 over z is, so 1 over z is less than 1, or when the absolute value of z is greater than 1. So then both series converges between, uh, for z, magnitude between 1 and 2. So if you have a circle, uh, one with radius one and another one with radius two. Okay, so this region here is where uh, this series is convergent. A uh, few definitions. Regular point if all these are zero, if z is analytic at z equals z sub zero and we call z not a regular point. Pole of order n and simple pole. If there are b's that are not zero, but all b's after are zero, fz is said to have pole of order n. If n is one, it has a simple pole. If there are infinite number of b's different from zero, then fz is an essential singularity. And the coefficients b1 is called the residue. Examples. Consider this series. It is analytic at z equals zero, and the residue at z equals zero is zero. So residue. This is the definition. Coefficients b one is called the residue um, at z equals zero. So there's no. Uh, the residue is zero. It doesn't appear here. Terms with one over z. The how about this series? So for this series, take note that the b terms start from here, two factorial, and then z two, z three, which means that starting from z three, all b's are zero. So it has a pole of order three at z equals zero. The residue, that is when um, we start with 1 over z, so the coefficient is 1 over 2 factorial. For this series, um, all of the um, the b's are there are infinite number of b's different from zero, so it has an essential singularity at z equals zero. And the residue is one, so this one here. For this function, it has a pole of order two at z equals zero, pole of order three at z equals one, and simple pole at z equals minus one. To, to show that, so for example, for this term here, z squared, this, other terms apart from z squared can be expanded as so you start with a sub zero plus a one z minus z sub zero plus a two z minus z sub zero squared and so on in power series so if we divide everything by z squared um, 
we'll have z squared here. The z here cancels with the z squared, so you have uh, 1 over z. But the z squared here cancels completely over z squared. So essentially, we only have two terms with b coefficients, z squared and z. So it ends with z squared, and we have a pole of order 2. Generally, if we divide this by z minus z sub 0 n, the, the pole would be at, uh, or the order, the pole would be of order n generally. So that's why we have 3 here and here 1. So it's a simple pole. For this function, sine squared z over z cubed, it has a simple pole at z equals 0 to verify. Remember, sine z is this. So if we take the square, so if we square this, we'll start with z squared and so on. So if this, this starts with z squared divided by z cubed, so the first or the only term that doesn't vanish in the denominator or the only series term that has a denominator of z would be 1 over z. So this, this is z squared divided by z cubed is 1 over z. That's why it has a simple pole.